Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. My hero pool consists of all the heroes named Storm Spirit and Hero Spirit you, guides on Storm, other heroes, lanes, mechanics, and everything in between. I also stream, coach, and analyze your replays. To support the content, you can get one of those services or just buy me a cup of coffee on Patreon. And with all that said, let's go. Storm clouds are gathering! A couple of months has passed since the Engagement Mentality Part 2 video and now it is perfect time to go back to the topic and add everything that has been missing from the first two videos, thus completing the trilogy. This topic will be presented through Storm's perspective, but absolutely any hero and role can utilize the information. If any of you would like to visit or revisit the first two Engagement Mentality topics, I will leave the links in the description. Let's begin. In this video, we'll mostly be analyzing how to prepare and execute initiations, what conditions need to be met for the successful engagement to happen, how to follow up on it, and how to identify when to disengage or not engage at all. For the sake of this video, we'll define initiation as an action that would force a fight between two or more heroes, and then we can start by recognizing what heroes are good at initiating and counter-initiating. This information should always be taught over during the pick phase and most players comprehend it automatically. Different heroes have different methods of initiation, understanding how each hero can play off another hero will be a big part in defining successful or unsuccessful initiations. For example, Storm, if he intends to initiate, just needs level 6 to reach an enemy and then can freely engage or disengage as needed. Earth Spirit and Phantom Assassin have cooldowns after initiation, and Silencer doesn't have any direct tools of initiation, but can force or break fights just by using his ultimate. What we can take from this is that the less resources the hero spends to initiate, for example Storm, the more active he should be around the map initiating fights, compared to Silencer, who needs to wait a good chunk of time for his ultimate to be available. And what I'm saying with all of this is that if your hero is capable of forcing fights or has tools to win those fights, he should always look for opportunities either to initiate or to accompany another hero who can initiate. This is best illustrated by carry heroes like Terrorblade and Juggernaut, who prefer to fight with full skill set and farm around the map when important spells are down. Let's move on to the next step. You and your game buddy is ready to initiate. Now what? Selecting targets wisely will often make or break the initiation process. There are many many variables that can turn the fight either way, but we can list some of the more important ones. So before initiation, few things must be considered. Where is the enemy? What is he doing? Aim to initiate on heroes that have a clear goal, which could be pushing a lane, traveling between jungle camps, or just static farming lane creeps. This makes their movement either non-existent or predictable. Proximity between the target and both teams. A hero that is solo pushing waves is usually an easier target than a hero that sits in his own jungle. Consider how fast can enemy team respond to the initiation and how fast can their own team join you in case things go wild. Time to kill, resources spent. This goes toe to toe to the previous point. If by engaging, heroes are going to spend all of their cooldowns and mana pool, they must make sure that they can retreat before the enemy team responds. These points should help you decide how risky an engagement is and whether to attempt it or not. Whatever you do, make your intentions known either through voice chat, pings, chat wheel or just regular chat. If one player backs away at the last second and other players continue engaging, this puts the entire operation at risk. And in the same manner, a player should be aware of incoming engagement requests and decide if he should help the initiators with the incoming fight. Sometimes it's just a small gank on an unsuspecting victim and the reaction isn't necessary. And sometimes it's a tower siege where every additional resource turns the tide. And lastly, be aware of how opponents improve throughout the match. A Slark, which was once an easy initiation target, now has Shadow Blade and requires much more resources to be caught. A Huskar, who melted with just a few ultimates, now has BKB and can turn the fights around as easily. Know when enemy heroes are at their weakest, know their item timings and play appropriately. Alright then, last step, the actual initiations. For this part, we will analyze some moments from this match. 
Our first moment actually happened earlier in the game. Now, usually, as Storm vs Monkey King, until my ultimate, I have no kill potential whatsoever, unless he dives. This means that most of the time, against him, Vortex is a wasted skill. However, since we have a hero on team that can initiate and reposition another hero, early point in Vortex improves this initiation aspect and lands us a kill. Next up, Gank on Huskar. Under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is falling. Over here now! Where's the party? <laughs> Taking into account what kind of hero is my initiation partner, how much resources we are going to spend on a potential target, and how soon can the enemy team respond to the engagement, a plan is set in motion. Ideally, we will chain my Vortex, his stun and his silence, which should be enough to kill Huskar in 5 or so seconds before help arrives. A few pings confirm the objective, and off we go. <laughs> and lastly, the final initiation that wins us the game. Let's put to use everything we've learned so far. Silencer is backing up my initiation with his ultimate. I disengage as soon as a target is down. Monkey has BKB, which is about to expire. This tells me to move out of his and his team's initiation range and be nearby for re-engagement. As we can see from the minimap, PA and ES is near, which puts us on 3 vs 3 situation. My mistake here. Now, the important part is that any follow up initiations should happen on the already engaged target, in this case, Hexed Monkey. Trying to fight two targets at a time isn't ideal, so we initiate on one target while disabling another. And all of this is only possible if all the players understand how their skill set synergizes with other heroes, which target is priority to kill, and how chaining spells will lead to successful engagements. This concludes Engagement Mentality Part 3. Good luck! Double kill. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Let the fun begin! Thunder. 